Here in the past few weeks, I've been slacking a little bit in some areas. I, I've let some things go. I realized just the other day that I haven't updated the repositories for DTOS in a while. DTOS is a custom repository of software that I maintain for the DTOS post installation script, which is a, a script you run after you've installed Arch Linux or any Arch Linux based distribution, and it installs basically my suite of applications, my dot files, my config files. You basically get DT's desktop environment, essentially. You know, you get DT's Xmonad desktop, as well as the option to install other things, such as my Qtile configs, Awesome Window Manager configs, DWM configs, etc. So uh, it's been probably at least a month or longer since the last time I actually rebuilt the DTOS packages. So I'm going to do that today on camera uh, and then I'm going to run through a quick installation of DTOS. I think I'm going to install it on top of Manjaro. So let me switch over to my desktop and I'm going to open my graphical file manager. So on my system I have this folder called GitLab repos and inside these GitLab repos these are all my repositories over on GitLab and then I have this one here called DTOS. If I click on it the DTOS is actually a group of repositories. As you can see, I've got uh, several DTOS related repositories here. And this is all locally on my system. But if you actually want to see this on GitLab itself, let me make my browser full screen. Go to my GitLab at gitlab.com slash DWT1. And then go to groups and you will see the DTOS group. Click on it. And there are all those repositories that you saw in my file manager a second ago. They're locally on my machine, right? And But this is them on the web. So you guys can check out everything I'm going to do as far as if you want to go check out the source code for all these scripts and, and, and everything. You can do that if you so choose. So when I rebuild the DTOS repository, what I do is I have this repository DTOS-package build, which has all the package builds for all the programs that are in the DTOS core repository. These are all the packages. If I go into any of these directories, you will see the package build that will build that particular program. Uh, I've got these scripts here, this build packages.sh script. It's just a simple bash script, right? It just execute this little code here, which it goes into each directory and it finds the package build for each directory for each package and it builds a uh, binary package. Then I also have this cleanup script that gets rid of any uh, extra cruft that is left around in this repository after I build the packages. And once I've built the packages in the DTOS package build, uh, repository here. Then I need to go into the DTOS core repo repository here and I need to run this script, build database. What this does is it takes all of those binary packages that now sit over in the DTOS package build repo and it moves them into this repository. There's all the binary packages. Each package has a binary which uh, will end in .pkg.tar.zst and each package will also have an accompanying signature, right? Because all of these packages are signed packages. I I've chosen to build them as signed packages. And again, if you want to see all of this on the web, again, just go to my uh, GitLab. Uh, again, just there's the DTOS package build repository. You can see all the package builds here. You know, if you want to go investigate them. And the same thing with the core repository. You can see the DTOS core repo. Go into x86 underscore 64. And there's all the binary packages hosted right here on GitLab. But let's go ahead and build it now that I've explained that. So I'm going to open up a terminal here. And I'm going to uh, zoom way in. Let's go ahead and clear the screen. And part of the reason I've kind of slacked a little bit here lately keeping up with DTOS and, and, and you know rebuilding the packages on a somewhat regular basis is because the process of building these packages is kind of lengthy. I mean it doesn't take a long time but you know I'm gonna have to spend you know 15 20 minutes to rebuild the repos. I'm probably gonna have to spend at least 15 20 maybe 30 minutes to install an Arch based Linux distribution and then install DTOS on top of that just to make sure that works. So you're looking at a, a good hour of time to update the repos and then test to make Make sure everything works. So I'm going to CD into um, my GitLab repos slash uh, DTOS and then slash DTOS dash uh, package build. 
I've got to do the package builds first. Let me zoom in a little more. If I do a LS, you can see there is the build packages shell script. I'm going to go ahead and do a dot slash and then build packages dot sh. Let me go ahead and run that script. It's going to ask for my sudo password. Actually, I just thought of something. Let me cancel that. This is a bad idea. Let me close that terminal. Let me check how many updates are available on my system right now. 423. I haven't updated this machine in a couple of weeks. And if I'm going to rebuild my DTOS core repository packages, uh, they need to be built against the latest versions of the software that's currently on my machine. Well, I don't have the latest and greatest software on my machine because I haven't updated in a while. So let me do a sudo pacman syu. And since I've got over 400 packages to update, this may take a while. And the system update finished. You can see here in the fish shell, it gives me the time that that last command took to execute. So it took about 4 minutes, 29 seconds to update those 423 packages. Now let me CD back into that DTOS package build repository. Once again, I'll do an ls and dot slash build dash packages dot sh is the name of the script I want to execute. And I shouldn't need to enter a sudo password since I just entered it. Oh, I guess enough time has passed. I think it's uh, my uh, sudo timeout is about five minutes. So in four minutes, 30 seconds was the time for that last command. So I guess I just missed it. So let me go ahead and enter my sudo password. And right now it's going into each one of those subdirectories in that DTOS package build repository. So each package has its own directory. It's going into each folder, finding the package build for every program and building the binary. This is going to take a few minutes. And the build packages script has finished. You can see the time here in the fish shell, four minutes, one second. So that actually was pretty quick. I'm going to open a second terminal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to CD uh, into my GitLab repo slash DTOS slash DTOS dash core dash repo. Because now I need to get all of those binary packages that are now sitting over in the DTOS package build repo over into the DTOS core repo. So what I'm going to do, let me clear the screen so you can see the command. Uh, if I do an ls, I have this cleanup script. This is what I need to run after those binary packages have been removed from the repo. They haven't been. Uh, what I need to do is I need to run a script here in the DTOS core repo called build database. So that's what I'm going to do. Build database just goes and rips out all of those .pkg, .tar, .zst files, those binary packages from this repository and moves them to this repository. That's all that did. And now that I've done that, I'm going to run, finally, this cleanup script. Because after building those packages, there could be some extra cruft laying around because uh, it cloned a lot of Git repositories and, you know, downloading source code to build those packages. Sometimes that stuff gets left around. So run the cleanup script just to make sure all of that stuff is gone. And then finally, I need to actually push the changes, right, that I have on my local system to the remote repositories, right, the repositories over on GitLab. So I need to do a git add dash u for update, right, any files I've updated in this repo. And then I need to clear the screen so you guys can see the next command, git commit dash m for message. This commit message is going to be simply updating package builds. There's really nothing else I need to, need to say, right? I'm just simply updating package builds. Then push the new package builds with a git push. And now I've done that. And then I just need to do the same thing over in the DTOS core repo. So once again, I'm going to do a git add uh, dash u. It's going to take a minute because these packages, these binary packages are much bigger. If I do a git status, let me make sure that it actually added everything that is new. Just to make sure, I'm going to do a git add asterisk, so add everything in this repo. And now that I've done that, I'm going to do git commit dash m for message. This time, I'm going to say updating the database. And then do a git push on this repo. The push may take a while. Again, these binary packages are kind of large. And the push completed. It took you know right at one minute that push and now that I've done that 
I've updated all the packages in the DTOS core repo. If I wanted to verify this, since I do have the DTOS core repo uh, as part of my pacman.conf here on my Arco Linux system, I could run another pacman syu and see if any of my packages, yeah, so these are all in the DTOS core repo packages that I had installed from it. You can see those packages have an update. None of the other packages on my system have an update because I took that update before I did this. Now, I'll decline taking that update for now because I want to actually run the entire DTOS installation in a virtual machine just to verify everything is working correctly. So I've already downloaded Manjaro's XFCE edition, so I'm going to install it inside a virtual machine. So I'm going to do this inside Vert Manager. So let me go ahead and create a new virtual machine here. Let's choose ISO. So let me browse. I'm going to browse local. It's in my downloads directory. Uh, let's search for something called Manjaro, Manjaro XFCE, and it already detects that that is Manjaro, so I'm just click forward. I'll give this virtual machine about 6 gigs of RAM, 2 cores of my 24 core CPU, is plenty of resources. We'll give it about 25 gigs of disk space, that's more than enough. Then I'm going to click forward, the name of this VM, Manjaro XFCE is what I'll name it. Let's go ahead and finish. And now let me make this full screen. Let's boot with the open source drivers since I'm in a VM. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run through a quick installation. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the installer here. Manjaro uses the familiar Calamares installer. So very quickly, uh, let me move the installer. I'm going to go ahead and click next and Chicago Central Time Zone is correct for me. I'll click next. English US is correct. I'll click next. I'm going to erase the disk, give the entire disk to Manjaro. I'm not going to create a swap for this VM. So let's just go ahead and click next. My name is DT. Uh, the username of this computer, the host name, I'll say Manjaro-vert. And then let's create a strong and complicated password for the DT user. Repeat the strong and complicated password. Do I want to log in automatically? No. Do I want to use the same password for the administrator account? So DT's password and the sudo password are the same. Yes, I'll click that on. Then click next. And then the summary all looks good. Click install. Install now. And this should take about 5 to 10 minutes. And Manjaro finished installing. I'm going to tick on the box here that says restart now. And then I'm going to go ahead and click done. And it should automatically reboot the machine for me. And now that the machine is rebooted and I've logged in, let me go ahead and I'm going to open a terminal. So let's open their terminal emulator. Let me uh, log in here. And so imagine you're wanting to try out DTOS. What you need to do, you need to install this on top of an Arch Linux based system. So either mainline Arch, which is probably the best thing to do, or an Arch based Linux distribution such as Manjaro. The very first thing you need to do is you need to download the DTOS installation script. And you basically you need to do this with git. So you need to do a git clone https colon slash slash gitlab.com slash dtos slash dtos is the location of the repository now that you've done that if you do an ls you should see the dtos directory there in your home directory assuming this is where you did this then cd into dtos if you ls now you see the DTOS repository, including this script here. And it's an executable script. That's why it's colored bold. You can actually run this. So let's run it. So dot slash, because anytime you run a script, you need to prepend it with dot slash DTOS. Enter your sudo password. The very first thing the script does, it updates the machine before installing the DTOS packages. It runs a Pac-Man SYU essentially. And depending on how old this ISO is, there may be a bunch of packages that it had to update. Once it finished running the Pac-Man SYU, then the DTOS installation process begins. You get this little uh, pop-up screen here, right? It basically walks you through exactly what DTOS is about to do to your system. I'm just going to click OK a few times here. And it errors out because it says your locales have not been set. And this is going to happen to pretty much most people when they try to run this script you're going to get this error message now this error message all you need to do is read it it tells you exactly how to fix the problem the problem is 
slash Etsy slash locale.conf. You need to set the lang and the lc underscore c type variables in the slash Etsy slash locale.conf. They need to be set essentially to the same value or they need to at least be set to something. So let's with sudo privileges because it's a protected file so you'll need sudo. I'm going to open this in Vim but if you wanted to you could use nano slash Etsy slash locale.conf. It says Vim is not found so let's do a quick sudo pacman dash s Vim and now let me up arrow to rerun that last command sudo Vim slash Etsy slash locale.conf and you see the very first variable lang is set to English US, right? So I'm just gonna YY to copy and then P to paste. And the problem is this variable was missing, LC underscore C type. Now let me escape and then colon WQ to write and quit. The reason that variable is needed is because some of the packages I install, especially some of the suckless packages like dmenu, they act a little flaky if you don't have that particular variable set. So that's why I go ahead and make you set it. And it's just to save yourself from any potential errors you might get later. Now that I've done that, uh, the error message before said once you set those locales, you need to reboot the machine. So let's reboot. All right, now that we've rebooted, now that we fix that config file, let's go ahead, open the terminal once again. And uh, I gotta remember the key binding uh, to zoom in and then CD back into the DTOS repo. Uh, once again, dot slash DTOS. Let's rerun the script. This time it should allow us to run the script with no problems. And now let's see. Okay, continue, continue, okay. Should we begin installing DTOS? Begin installation. All right, now it's adding some PGP keys, and then it's going to ask us, which window managers do you want to install? Uh, typically, I would recommend installing Xmonad. This is the one that I've tested the most, although I do offer the option to also install Awesome and Qtile. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a capital Y for yes, and then it's going to install all of these packages needed for my Xmonad desktop. So Xmobar, uh, all the Haskell libraries, some fonts that I use in Xmobar, and etc. So I'm just going to hit enter on that. And once it's done with this, it's going to ask us, would you also like to install Qtile? Would you like to also install Awesome? I'm going to install them all just as just to make sure all the packages work. All right, and now we get another prompt. Do you wish to install Awesome? Once again, I'll do capital Y for yes. And then begin installation. Yeah, it's going to install just a few packages for Awesome because most of the stuff that Awesome needed, we've already installed with Xmonad. You know, so uh, these are very quick. Do you wish to install Qtile? Capital Y, yes. And then once again, just a few packages to install our Qtile. And now it's installing a ton of packages, just general packages from the DTOS core repo, as well as some of the packages just from your standard Arch repository, or in this case, Manjaro repository. You can see it needs about 354 packages. If you were doing this on a like a standard base Arch Linux installation, you, you can basically think of it as it's going to set up you know, your entire Xorg server your your graphics server your display server it's going to install you know all the needed libraries and everything for a proper desktop kind of linux experience and now that it's finished installing all the uh, standard arch packages now it's running through an installation of doom emacs and uh, the way the script is set up now no longer do you have to confirm anything for doom emacs it just automatically answers all the questions with yes so before, in the earlier versions of DTOS, you had to stay at your computer for this lengthy installation and answer yes for some of these Doom Emacs questions. Because it, it does take Doom Emacs about 10 minutes or so to build. This is the uh, biggest part of the installation is building Doom Emacs. I will go ahead and say it looks like the installation script is going to complete because we probably wouldn't have got this far had something were to go wrong. Typically where things go wrong is after you set the slash etsy slash locale, you know, and reboot and then rerun the DTOS script, typically where it fails is right at the beginning when it starts installing stuff uh, from the DTOS core repo is because some of my packages conflict with some of the packages on certain Arch based Linux distributions because, uh, for example, I maintain my own 
a package for Xmonad. Well, some Arch-based distributions may maintain their own uh, custom Xmonad package or whatever it happens to be. That's just an example. And the packages conflict. So what you have to do is there is some trial and error. If you run into that problem, what you need to do is you either need to uninstall the conflicting package from your existing system if you can, or what you'd probably have to do otherwise is not install it in the DTOS script. What you'd have to do is if you go into the DTOS repo, the directory that you cloned, you'll find a package list.txt file. Open it, find the package that conflicts and just won't install for you, and just delete that, that package from the list, and then rerun the script. And it finished the installation of Doom Emacs, and then it recompiled Xmonad for us. It compiled the Xmonad CTL script. And the very final part of the installation, what shell would you like to be your default user shell? The DTOS script installs Fish, Bash, and ZSH, and installs all three shells. So pick one by number for your default user shell. So I'm going to choose Fish as the default shell. Do you want to reboot? Yes. And the machine reboots and uh, everything is working correctly. This is actually my uh, uh, login manager theme. For, this is a SDDM and this is my uh, multicolor SDDM theme. It's a package. Uh, so I just need to log in here. So let me go ahead and log in. Actually, before I log in, by default, it looks like it's going to try to log us into Qtile Wayland, which won't work because I didn't install any Wayland stuff, so that would just be a black screen. So I'd need to either pick Awesome Qtile XFCE, which is because Manjaro had that installed, or Xmonad. Let's try Xmonad first. And everything works. You even get my startup sounds and everything. You also still get some of the Manjaro startup stuff going on. Uh, that's easy to fix, though. What I need to do, well, the first thing I need to do is super enter to get a terminal. Let's do xrander-s 1920 by 1080 to get a proper screen resolution. And now that I've done that, let me also do super p b. This is one of the DM scripts. Super p for prompt B for background. Let's set a random background just to draw <laughs> another background so we get that. Um, let me go ahead and kill the conky. So kill all conky. All right, now that we've done that, uh, let me launch PC Man FM, which was installed for us using the script. And let's go ahead and show hidden files. If I go into dot config auto start. So this is all the stuff that Manjaro auto starts by default. If I just delete all of that, I'll never see like the Manjaro Hello screen or any of that stuff again. So that is how you get rid of that for those of you wondering. Next Mobar all look fine. You've got Trayer, which is the system tray sitting over here. Let's see if Doom Emacs works. So Super E followed by E should launch Doom Emacs. And it does. The very first time you launch it after the installation, it's going to ask, do you want to download the emoji images? It's got to install some emoji font stuff. I strongly recommend you actually do install that stuff because it makes Doom Emacs a little prettier, especially for some of the, the glyphs and bullets and things, especially in org mode documents and stuff like that. So Doom Emacs is working. I can close that. Do you really want to close it? Yes. It doesn't look like the Emacs daemon started, though. Uh, the Emacs daemon should automatically start when you log in to uh, Xmonad, but the very first time, I don't know why, this is just the very first time it doesn't. Now, if I log out and log back in, it will start the Emacs daemon, but for those of you wondering how to start it without doing that, just uh, launch the command. Let's do the full path. User slash bin slash Emacs space dash dash daemon space ampersand. Hit that. It's going to run the Emacs daemon, the Emacs server, in the background. Because it's running it as a background process, you can go ahead and kill the terminal. The Emacs server is still running. Now, when we do super EE, -E, it launches Doom Emacs as a Emacs client window. So now everything looks fine. Let's go ahead and see if Awesome works and Qtel works. So I'm going to uh, super shift Q to quit and get back to the login manager. Just very quickly, I'm going to log into the Awesome window manager. Uh, awesome. It's taking a minute to load, which is not unusual. Awesome takes a second to launch, at least using my config. I got a lot going on in my config. I got a lot going on in the panel. Everything seems to be working just fine, though. Once again, super enter. We can get alacrity. Uh, once again, I'll 
fix the resolution there. Super P, B. Once again, set a random wallpaper. Yes, we'll keep that. All right, so awesome looks just fine. Super E, E should launch Doom Emacs as a client window, and it does. So the Emacs server is still running, uh, which it should be because us killing Xmonad didn't kill the Emacs server, right? So I, I can actually switch between all these window managers, the Emacs server should always be running as long as the computer is running until I shut down or reboot. So Awesome is working. Super Shift Q to quit. Now in Awesome, I have a confirmation uh, screen for quitting, which for consistency's sake, I probably should add that to all the window managers. So let me log out. Do you really want to log out? Yes. All right. And now let's finally check out Qtile. Qtile with Xorg. Don't try Qtile with Wayland. I, I haven't tested it. So, so Qtile. Launches correctly once again. Super enter gets us a terminal. Let's run the xrander command to fix the screen resolution. Super P B once again. Set a random wallpaper. Yeah, we'll keep that. And uh, I'll do D menu and do kill all conky right here inside D menu. That way I don't have to launch a terminal. Of course, I do have to spell kill all conky correctly. There we go. And super E. E should launch Doom Emacs. It does, but it does not look like it did the uh, client window. Let's see if Emacs is running. Kill all Emacs. Emacs was running, so I guess that was a client window because if it wasn't running, kill all Emacs wouldn't have done anything, right? It would have, it would have said no process found. So Emacs, the, the, everything is working correctly. So it's working correctly in Qtile. Awesome Xmonad. So there you have it. For those of you that are using DTOS, uh, the next time you run an update on your system, uh, do a sudo pacman syu, you should see a, a new package version pretty much for all the DTOS packages. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode James Maxim, Matt Mimit Mitchell, Paul Royal West, Armor Dragon, Bash Potato, Chuck Commander Angry, George Lee, Methos, Nate Ur, Jan Paul, Peace Arch and Vador, Polytech Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Tools Devler, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. Um, you guys watching me rebuild DTOS, it wouldn't have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. Now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. I still need to get around to adding DWM to the DTOS script.